Well, hi everyone. I'm John Redland, and this is my review of AEW Dynamite, another empty arena edition, and I have no goddamn idea what I'm going to call this show. I have no idea how to review this because this was messy. It was really goddamn messy. Now, firstly, I am really glad that AEW is still putting on a product, even with no fans there, and they're doing the best they can. I hope every single talent, member of the staff, gets home safely, stays healthy. I hope for that, but this show, after last week's pretty damn good edition, you know, where they had a lot of fun with the empty arena concept, and uh, last night's episode of Dark, I was expecting, oh, okay, they'll at least have a decent show. No, this this was very, very messy. I know this is going to be very, very divisive, and I'm not going to lie to you. I'm probably going to piss some people off with the stuff I didn't like, but let me know in the comments, of course, what you guys think. We have Tony Schiavone, Cody, and Omega on commentary. Cody, Omega. It's like a fusion dance. Uh, so basically Excalibur, Taz, JR, they weren't there, um, which is fine if you want to run a small crew, that's totally fine. Um, there were people backstage betting on matches, Sean Spears, The Guns, Billy and Austin, um, there were others that would, you know, be interchangeable, switch out and all that, and Dasha was also there, I don't know why Dasha was there, but you know what, hey, she was having a lot of fun, so that's great. And then we have Cody versus Jimmy Havoc, referee Aubrey. Aubrey got a lot of work in tonight. I believe she was part of three matches. And there was some good wrestling here. Actually, I think these guys cut a pretty good pace here. You could argue that maybe this went on a little bit too long, but oh no, it didn't go on nearly as long as one other match did. No worry, I'm going to get to that. Uh, there was a nice cutter off the ropes. Jimmy Havoc, of course, going for the eyes. And Cody even getting a bottle of water and trying to get into his eyes. You know, because that's perfectly what you do when you can't open your eyes. You're like, let me get some water in. Oh, fuck, God, now I made it even worse. I kind of get what he was doing, but it was kind of silly. We get Jericho Spears. Jericho was actually back there, too. And Spears and the guns cheering on backstage during this. And then Cody runs back into the tunnel and then back out and does the Larry thing. The great mood of spot that he did with Hulk Hogan in 93, I believe. And then there was one point where Jimmy Havoc actually, you know, reversed the cutter into an armbar off the ropes. Really nice move there. But then Cody later, two crossroads, one, two, three. That's the right call. Jake Roberts on the screen. He wants Cody to meet them. Says, trust me. Talks about, you know, bring Arn Anderson. Bring anybody. We want to meet you. We want to have this match. We want you to, you know, we, we want you to face Lance Archer. That's what's going to happen. Like, we want... This happened. Jake Roberts is like, I want you to, like, you know, see my hand-picked guy and meet my hand-picked guy. And I will give Jake uh, credit here. Since it was a pre-tape promo, he was able to do a lot better. It didn't sound nearly as rough as he did when he cut one live a couple <laughs> a couple weeks ago, you know, in front of that big crowd. But it was good stuff, and Jake is still able to do a really good promo. And then, as they're coming back from commercial... <laughs> You hear some uh, crew say, and we're live, and I don't know why that amused me. But Lance Archer is apparently debuting on the next Dynamite. They didn't say next week, because there are certain things being instituted where maybe AEW won't be able to have a Dynamite next week. We don't know, because of all this stuff of limited crowds and everything, and things being on lockdown, we all know why. If they can't have a Dynamite next week, and they gotta have, um, they gotta have video packages, highlight shows, for a few weeks, then it is what it is. But Archer's going to have his debut at some point. Next Dynamite, next week, whatever. Uh, we get a Darby Allen a video where he's burning shit down, taking Seth Rollins' gimmick, actually, to be perfectly honest. He's just burning shit because Darby is just, you know, that cool and that weird. And Darby's awesome, by the way. If you get a chance to meet him at any indie shows, really, really cool guy. <clears throat> or if you get a chance to meet him in any AEW shows when fans are still a are able to go there again. This was this was interesting, and it was Kip Sabian with Penelope Ford versus Darby Allen. And Cody praising both men and little Darby's all over. Talking about the face paint and stuff like that. Apparently Darby has been busy and a lot of kids are running around. Or he's being cloned. That's it. He's being cloned. That's exactly what happened. I don't know what I'm on about anymore. We go to commercial. And then they go to commercial like 30 seconds later and we get a bit of the Fight TV uh, feed. Again, they're probably running a skeleton crew and they're doing the best they can. But just some of the stuff is so goddamn amusing here. It did seem a little bit amateurish, but it is what it is. Darby does the best dives because he throws his body into them and does some really good stuff. And they land on the part after the mats, you know, like, are separated from the guardrail where they hit the concrete. 
And Cody throws out the Bill Watts reference, like when Bill Watts took the mats away, when he took over WCW for a bit in 92 and early 93. And then Darby hits a weird, you know, pin variation called The Last Supper. One, two, three. Cool. That was good stuff. And then we get a Hager video package where he beats up everybody that, you know, that uh, claims that climate change is real. If you've seen his Twitter feed, you know what I'm talking about. They also, uh, commentary also talks about him being an academic All-American. Well, just because he's an academic All-American doesn't mean he's actually a smart person. Again, if you check his Twitter feed, you know what the fuck I'm talking about. You want to support an orange idiot, you're not exactly a smart person. So, he faces a guy named uh, Chico Adams and it's a squash. The choke out, that, that's it. That's all it was. Then here's Moxley. He lays him out with the paradigm shift and is, you know, like sauntering and everything, all this kind of stuff. And then Hager manages to pick the ankle, kind of come to, pick the ankle, get a little bit of a brawl. He teases hitting him with the belt, that beautiful world championship belt. And I think second only to the IWGP Heavyweight Championship, he, um... We we get that little we get a little bit of a brawl there, and then Moxley talking a little bit uh, later, saying you're going to be carted or stretchered out, or I'm going to die trying. Okay, we're probably going to get that double or nothing, provided double or nothing actually happens. It's very much up in the air what shows are and aren't going to happen. And then we get a video package about the Dark Order, which is a gimmick I still hate, and I abs I, I absolutely 100% hate it. I'm sorry, no ma no amount of resetting bringing people in, whatever, trying any of this stuff is going to work with me. I I understand if people like it, that's fine. I, I'm done giving the Dark Order chances, especially after that December 18th, um, you know, Dynamite, you know, the last Dynamite of 2019 where they did that freaking bullshit thing. That was about the last time that I was really willing to give anything a chance and even with Brody Lee. And Brody Lee is talented enough, but I don't know if he's going to be able to save this. But there are some people that are thrilled about it, and that is great. But then we get Brody Lee in a meeting where he's eating steak. He's trying to stake his claim. He's meeting with the people in the Dark Order. Am I hitting you over the head enough with these uh, meat puns? Gross. Am I, beating you, am I beating the meat over your head enough? You know what? This is getting away from me. The whole point is, He's eating. He's like, no, why are you trying to eat? Because there's other, you know, Dark Order members there. No, you can't eat until I'm done eating. And then a guy sneezes. And he says, don't sneeze around me. And kicks him out. Because Vince hates sneezing. The only way this could have been more on the goddamn nose and making fun of Vince is if he was eating a burrito and didn't know what the fuck a burrito was. So was it unnecessary? Yes. Was it funny? Yes. This this was pretty funny. It also kind of reminded me of the Billionaire Ted stuff that WWE did back in the 90s and back in like 95, 96. And actually, now that I think about it, getting some eerie similarities with AEW. Sometimes when they do a great show, it blows NXT out of the water. And other times they'll do stuff like this, even empty arena or not. And it's just messy. And this show just didn't fire. After this, it just didn't fire. Brody Lee versus QT Marshall. It was okay. QT got in a couple shots, but was really just, you know, beaten up. And the disc accelerate, one, two, three. And then there's this creeper guy, and he then drops the mask on uh, QT's chest. And great, cool, more people that we get in the Dark Order, please know. We then get a Matt video package. He will delete the inner circle, essentially, is what he said. And then we get a Nick Jackson update. Vanguard 1 is there. And then apparently flew all the way back across the coast to get to him. Or to get to get to the show because he appears later, or it appears later. Why am I why am I adding a gender to a freaking drone? We then get Sammy Guevara and Kenny Omega. It's the Mega AAA Championship, not the Mega AAA Championship, because otherwise a wall would be built around it because of what they believe. Look, I'm gonna prepare myself to talk about this in the closing segment. I'm gonna grab. Wait, there, that should do it. Ow, um, that's actually kind of what this felt like. It felt like it was constantly hitting you over the head with the fact that we have nothing else for this show. I don't want him to have a huge crew there, have the crew that wants to go there, that's comfortable going there, trying to entertain the crowd. And there's nothing wrong with long matches. This was the sake of a long match, just, you know, just to have one. And I'm sorry, I just wasn't feeling it. I wasn't feeling it at all. It just didn't work for me. Aubrey was there as a referee, of course. You know, nothing against her. She's great. She can add a lot of, um, a lot of coolness and a lot of realism to championship matches. The fact they had 45 minutes left, no, 44 minutes left when the bell rang, I'm like, you gotta be fucking kidding me. Why is this gonna go this long? And then somebody reminded me, well, the Matt, uh, the Matt Hardy, Chris Jericho thing is gonna be on last. 
great, but this is still requiring this match to at least go 25 minutes. And uh, Kenny Omega still having the busted hand or like broken pinky or something. It's broken pinky or busted wrist or something. I don't remember what it is. But uh, Sammy kept focusing on that, you know, put his fingers in the eyes. Um, there are signs on these chairs or these hand-drawn things where Sammy ends up kissing a hand-drawn, uh, you know, Brandy thing and, you know, Brandy sign. And Brandy's just, like, looking, <clears throat> like, on in disgust that she's the ring announcer there. Apparently she hates ring announcing, but she's actually really, she's pretty good at it, actually. And then uh, he keeps eyeing Brandy, and then Omega attacks him. And this went on forever. And then Spears and both guns, father and son, leave the backstage area. They just, you know, the trailer or whatever the hell it is where they're watching backstage. And we don't know where the fuck they went. They might have gone to the goddamn moon. Maybe they're trying to see, you know, to see if they can establish life on the moon. Maybe they're going to film the sequel to Apollo 18. I don't fucking know, and I don't think anybody else does. So, we get biting stuff. We get biting action between two men. It's the Spanish biting god. We get a cutter off the roof. We get the J driller for two. We get Sammy coming back, then falling uh, to the one-wing angel for three, and thank fucking Christ that was over. I get what they were doing and there's nothing wrong with trying to make a championship mean something, but this is a championship. Yes, they may have a working relationship with AAA, and I'm not even knocking AAA, but you're not going to feature your tag teams or your, your your championships on the show. That this is the best way you're going to do it. You're not going to have any women on there. And again, the women could be on dark, or maybe the women weren't comfortable traveling. I'm not sure. But this was... This was, a, this was messy. We didn't have Jericho... Um, Filming the camera guy singing Judas as he makes his way to the ring, which was funny. I think commentary is a little bit too harsh on the guy because the guy looked like he was having fun. Jericho is then talking with the stage mic and offers Matt a chance to join the inner circle. And then Vanguard One shows up and he cuts a promo on the drone. This is the highlight of the goddamn segment because it got a whole lot worse after this. And this is where things are really going to get controversial. <laughs> but he comes... I don't like your I don't like your social media your your uh your beliefs your your or your political beliefs this kind of stuff but I respect you and what in you know what and what you do I don't know why him cutting a promo on the goddamn drone was so entertaining to me but again that was the highlight of it and then he calls himself you know the stupid idiot this kind of stuff all that and he <clears throat> hammers on that and then we get, where's Matt Hardy? Oh, there's Matt Hardy. He's up there. Wait, no, he's down here. He's down there. And they do this teleporting thing where it's obvious editing. I mean, obviously, since Matt can't teleport, I mean, and no offense against Matt Hardy, he can barely walk at this point because he's abused his body for so many damn years. That's going to happen when you're in your mid-40s and you've wrestled as long as he has, even with the shape he is in. He is in pretty good shape, but still, Father Time is undefeated. Matt teleports the stuff of Jericho's head. Do, 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 this kind of—it was so bad. It was so bad. If this was on WWE television, people would have killed it. I mean, I'm sorry. It's just true. I didn't even care for the broken stuff when it was in Impact, though. I give Matt credit and Jeff credit and Impact, you know, credit for trying to do something different. The thing is, the broken character has a shelf life. It really does have a shelf life, and that shelf life's done. I love I love Matt. I wish him nothing but the best, and hopefully his creative freedom can allow him to do whatever he wants. But maybe it wasn't so bad that his creativity was stifled just a little bit because this went on forever. The editing was terrible, and then Jericho and Matt are talking about whatever. Uh, the His younger brother, Jeff, I mean, you know, Matt's younger brother, and then <laughs> bad booking, and he calls himself the... Uh, the maker of pain and the hole of the ass, which was kind of funny, you know, twisting, twisting the words around like he does and everything. But this went, this was so fucking cringe. I actually was begging. I was yelling at my TV for this to end just for the love of God. end, end. why is this going on forever? What the hell? Why didn't they put a squash match on before they uh, put Sammy and uh, Sammy and, you know, Kenny out there? Because then that wouldn't have gone nearly as long, or if it did, this wouldn't have gone nearly as long. This was time. This was time filler, to to a spectacular degree. It just, it wasn't good. I'm sorry, it wasn't good. There are people that like it. That's fine. Yes, they were having fun with it. Jericho trying to talk to Matt like he's a normal person, even though all the stuff that was going on, it just it wasn't good. I I I believe I pretty much fucking hated it. 
again, I'm hoping that everybody, you know, had a lot of fun and everything, and I'm glad they're trying to entertain us, but this wasn't entertaining at all. It just was not entertaining. I, I didn't, I pretty much hated it. And then we had, oh, Jericho's like, hey, here, you know, oh, Abercadaver, you know, Matt Hardy gets laid out, and this guy's over, gets his ass kicked, and here's Sammy Guevara, and we get Aaron Circle, Elite, you know, battles and everything, and then Matt Hardy does this, and, you know, does the delete stuff, and gets... The pyro going off and everything and it just it wasn't good i'm sorry it just wasn't good i gotta end this review because it's just it was painstakingly drawn out and just not good so i look forward to the hate in the comments because i'm pretty certain they will because god forbid if i have an opinion but anyway agree disagree with what i said like share subscribe twitter handle in the description i'm john ritlin i'll see you soon